Welcome back. In this unit, we're going to dive into Brownie's best capability, testing. We previously saw how easy it is to use Brownie to interact with the blockchain. You can do things like deploy a token. We wrote a script to automatically deploy funds to this three pool here. Let's go a step further. Within Curve, there's a number of pools that rely on the three pool, so-called meta pools. This means if you have tokens in three pool, you could invest here in USD in, FRAX, TUSD. Curve is always adding new pools. And as we see, some of them are tagged as innovation zone. How can we make sure that as Curve adds new pools, these innovations aren't going to break our application? This is why unit testing was invented. Within the programming community, it's very common nowadays to write a suite of tests which will declare common cases you'd like your script to get to and say if they pass or fail. If they fail, you can look into it. Maybe the test was poorly programmed or maybe something changed. Brownie utilizes PyTest, and if you're not familiar with PyTest, it's okay. We'll give you a bit of a basic understanding. We'd also refer you to the documentation, which is very good. It's a very robust suite. In this unit, we're gonna focus on fixtures. You can think of fixtures as like config variables for your test suite. Say there's contracts you interact with frequently, or maybe some basic money needs to move around to actually start kicking off programming your application. Fixtures make it really easy because when you define a fixture, that fixture, such as token here, can then be passed as arguments into your test, which will inherit, in this case, a deployed token. We'll get started with a few basic examples. PyTest, and by extension Brownie, is going to look for fixtures in tests slash conftest.py. Within this, this file was automatically generated when we used the token mix and we repurposed it. We changed their deploy script to be called a Margarita token. We're going to create a couple of fixtures for two humans called Alice and Bob. If you've done much with computer science, you know that Alice and Bob happen to have initials A and B, which make it useful. And they're always sending packets of information back and forth. In this case, we're going to send packets of money back and forth. It's easier to type Alice. And when that happens, return accounts zero. And we'll turn her into a fixture by decorating it with this PyTest fixture. You can pass different scopes. For our case, we're going to pass a module, which means that every time a new module is loaded, this will be rerun. Uh, this is such a simplistic one, it doesn't really matter. This one up here is run every time the function is reloaded, which is going to perform a chain rewind. That's a bit complex. It's not that important to know how it works. The important thing is you can pass a scope of function, class, module, or session. We'll create Bob while we're here. And Bob will simply be accounts one. And within these, we could then go and fund Alice's account or give Bob approvals or transfer money around. So depending on what our application needs to do, it's useful to have this in one place. We'll now load up a blank file. And within this, we're going to create just a very simple test. Alice is not Bob to make sure everything's working properly. We'll import Alice and Bob. And our assertion is simply Alice is a different human being from Bob. You call our tests, you type brownie test. If you pass no other arguments, it will run through every test in your tests folder, or you can pass specific folders and or files to be more specific. This is useful if you just want to run a couple scripts quickly. And I already have a typo, so I'm glad I checked. It's not returns, it's return. And certainly we see Bob and Alice are different human beings. Good to know. 